new lens, new makeup. So I was hip thrusting and thinking about you guys. I was like, oh my God, I have the perfect idea for a video. And if I don't do it, I'm gonna pass away. And I'm trying to just do more spontaneous videos because they make me really happy and it seems like you guys like them as well. The lip balm is Software by Experiment. It's like their brand new lip balm. I'm obsessed with it. I've been loving playing with makeup recently. Some things are old, but some things are new. Milk, Hydro Grip, this is old. God forbid a woman has fun, right? God forbid a woman has fun while she's hip thrusting. Oh, thank you so much to Care for sponsoring today's video. I've talked about Care of before, but if you didn't know already, Care of offers a curated set of products that are designed to work with research-backed ingredients and optimal doses. And the Care of app even helps you track how you're feeling and play back insights about your results over time so you can adjust your routine as your needs change. I love that with Care of, I literally just get the box sent right to my door. It's a cute little addition that it says my name on it, duh. And all I had to do was take a quiz online and talk about what kind of needs I am looking for to find out the best supplements and vitamins for me. So far, my two favorites are the Prebiotic Plus because I do have bloating and also iron because I never eat meat. Even though we're late into March, I feel like I'm taking better care of myself now than I was at the start of the year. And that just goes to show it's not too late to jumpstart your health routine just because it isn't January 1st anymore. And Care of is here to help celebrate you with a personalized experience that will help you feel your youest. I have a lot of plans and a lot of goals for myself this summer, so for me to feel my healthiest and my best is so important to me, and I love how much Care Of has played a part in that. Take Care Of's quiz today to see what is recommended for you. All you have to do is use my code Nicole Raffi, and you get 50% off subscription items in your first order. Also, just to make it easier on you, there is a QR code on the screen. Thank you, Care Of. This has been on my mind, especially because last <laughs> night I posted on my Instagram story. In a joking way, I was like, let's see exactly what I said. What is my color season? Do I have upturned or downturned eyes? What is my visual weight? Does gold or silver look better on me? Do I have a neutral or olive skin tone? This is exhausting. I think some people think that I was being serious, which is like very far from it because um, I'm never serious, except sometimes when I sit down for a video. Ardell brow glue, best brow glue ever. Look at my nails. <laughs> By Lucky Gloss on Instagram. <laughs> And today while I was hip thrusting, I was thinking about that story and I was thinking about Jemima Kirk. And I was thinking about her Instagram story from a while ago that someone asked any advice to unconfident young women in which she responded, I think you guys might be thinking about yourselves too much. And I cannot tell you how often I hear that phrase in my mind. There's a few phrases that I hear repeatedly in my mind. One of them is when I used to work at Chipotle, I was like only a few months in and I was 16 years old and it was New Year's Eve. I remember I needed to clock out at two o'clock and I was put on the cash register for the very first time and my manager said, well, no one showed up for the cashier shift, so I guess you have to stay until like three. And my stepdad was already outside. I was already terrified. I started crying because I was overwhelmed. The soda machine was broken. I was like a mess. I was overwhelmed and this guy said to me while I was crying, a customer said, hey, life's not that bad. And although I was very, very frustrated and annoyed with him at the time, because I was like, what a sick little fuck. I'm overwhelmed, it's New Year's Eve. I can't even hang out with my family nor my friends because I have to hear everyone complaining about this stupid fucking soda machine. And my manager won't let me go home and is holding me against my will, holding me hostage in the Chipotle of a mall, which is scarier than just a regular Chipotle. But to this day, I hear his voice and I hear, Life's not that bad. And you know what? He's right about that. And same thing applies to Jemima Kirk saying, I think you guys might be thinking about yourselves too much. So anytime I'm feeling a little bit insecure about myself or I'm thinking, hey, maybe I said something stupid when I hung out with this person and now I'm home and I hate myself, I just think to myself, girl, maybe you're thinking about yourself a little bit too much. Also, there's cowboy. I can't tell you how many times I have like had a pair of sweatpants on the ground that are black. And I've like almost stepped on. I'm like, oh my God, sorry, cowboy just to realize it's pants, but that's actually him. Anyway, how do I feel about TikTok shutting down? Well, obviously I will miss it. I used to use this all the time in the past, but I just rebought it, the Glossier Future Do, and I forgot how much I like this. Oh, Nicole, why is your skin so smooth? Thank you so much, I just shaved it. I'm not doing any on my forehead because bangs will get greasy. Is it sad that TikTok may get shut down? Sure. However, does it absolutely drive me up the wall when my whole entire feed is based off of people asking others how they look best? By the way, this is the Tower 28 concealer, and this is why I'm doing my makeup during it. It seems fitting. I feel like every other video on there right now is either Joe's song, End of Beginning, which by the way, I like Joe before all of you guys, so I'm way fucking cooler than everyone, but it's a lot of people not being sure of themselves, asking what looks best on them, doing those filters where it's like, what color season is right for you. And uh, should I be wearing gold or silver? I always loved silver, but now people are telling me I look better in gold. I personally exclusively wear gold, but people tell me all the time on here that I should wear silver. What are we thinking? So I've 
been a gold girly for my whole life, my whole life, and then I dyed my hair blue. And my fashion boyfriend, ew, boyfriend, <laughs> told me that I'm now in my cool era. And I said, well, that's not good because I've invested all of my money into gold jewelry. <laughs> so I'm gonna put on some silver jewelry and I need you guys to tell me if you prefer gold or silver. Did that do something? Did that do something for you? I own all silver jewelry, but now this filter is telling me that I'm gonna incinerate if I don't start wearing gold. So what is my visual weight? Do I look better in more makeup, less makeup, more dramatic makeup? Should I be doing my eyebrows? Should I not be filling in my eyebrows? What should I be doing? You have either a high or a low visual weight. And this is really important to know. What kind of eyeliner is best for my eye shape? Poppy dog eyeliner, upturned eyeliner, siren eyes. And my absolute least favorite, the one that actually like kills me, is when people are like, be brutally honest. What is something that I have to change about myself to make me seem prettier like please like you can be as critical as you want i'm not going to get offended i just really want to know how to make myself prettier i got you girl that breaks my heart more than anything because i'm like not to be all like guys you're beautiful just the way you are but it's like fuck We've regressed. We've regressed so badly. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. If you're watching this video and you have ever considered going on TikTok and asking people, what are some things that would make me look better? Don't ever do that. I will personally come to your house. It's a threat. This is a say sun melt and fair bronze. I say this as a person who has felt these feelings before. I have made videos on my channel in the past about like how I'm self-confident and how you can be too. And that's like one of the most often comments that I get on my videos or even like Instagram DMs is how are you so confident? You make me want to be more confident of a person. I love the way that you carry yourself. I'm going to be fucking honest. I don't know if you guys could tell, but I'm faking it. I'm faking it a lot of the time. And then the other half of the time, I just don't care. You know that Ethan Klein clip? I'm crazier than you are. I'm crazier than you are by a lot. I care less than you do. Unless sometimes I do care and then I care a lot. I struggled with self-esteem so much growing up. And then I just got to a point where I was like, I'm done doing shit for like the male gaze. I'm doing everything that makes me happiest and makes me feel the best. And I will have times of like uncertainty of like, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the wrong thing? That's like a big thing. And it's also because I have OCD. Surprise, surprise. Big topic of conversation in my life. I got snot on the brush. I have this thing called just right OCD. You may think that it's like, oh, adjusting things like gotta move the curtains until it's just right and like perfect and like physically in place. And it's not always things like that. Sometimes it can be like, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the wrong thing? And so a lot of that actually had to do with like before I was on medication, before I was in therapy. By the way, my therapist is back from maternity leave. So now all of you are subjected to the same exact therapy speak that I have been given. You're welcome. I pay for weekly therapy. You get it for free from me. I'm kidding. Prior to that, with my appearance, I had this really like strong anxiety about what is right and what is wrong. I'm like, oh my God, there must be a right way that I must look. Like the perfect hairstyle for me, the perfect makeup routine for me, the perfect fitness routine for me to optimize myself, like my physical appearance and just the maximum amount of beauty, which nowadays is just called fucking looks maxing, which I cannot believe that's real. Nikki Carrion has done an amazing video about looks maxing and there's tons of videos about like what looks maxing is, but it's like infiltrated male spaces now too, which like fucking blows. Cause hey, it's not just girly pops on here. There's boy pops now too. This is the Say blush in baby. This is what I think of as my Sabrina Carpenter blush. I'm like, I am Sabrina Carpenter. I used to wish that I could go to a professional and just ask them, hey, give me the right look for me. Like everything right look, like go to a stylist and be like, give me the absolute best style to basically maximize my hotness in whatever way possible. Does that make sense? I hope to God that makes sense because it makes perfect sense in my mind. Like going to a hairstylist and being like, I want you to do what you think would look absolutely best on me. I even talked about this in an early video, but I had this like vision, like my dream was to die and go to heaven or wherever the hell I'm going and be able to ask God or whoever is up in the fucking sky and be like, hey, can you give me all of the answers to the things that I had questions about? Like how many boys liked me in the fifth grade? What is the amount of times that someone spoke badly about me? Was brown hair the right color for my hair? 
or was it copper all along? And the way that I'm relating this all to TikTok is because there are tools out there to make you feel better about yourself. There's nothing inherently wrong about finding out your perfect color season or whatever the hell. I think of me as a person, I know what colors I like best on me, what colors I feel like suit me, what colors I like to wear, and what colors I feel like, hmm, I look a little bit washed out in. But if I wanna wear the purple sweater, I'm gonna wear the purple sweater because I like it. And I think this trend of like color seasoning and telling people your opinions about their color seasons without them asking is fucked up. I see it being done to celebrities. I saw it happen to the actress who played Rory Gilmore in Gilmore Girls. I'm so sorry. I don't remember her name. These pictures of Alexis Bledel at the Oscars just came across my For You page and I need the names of who did this to her because it's literally keeping me up at night now. Alexis is so beautiful and I think they did her so dirty. Her hair looks like it was not professionally styled, and her makeup is too warm for her features. And while there's some debate on what her season is, whether she's a clear winter or a cool summer, and personally, I think she's a cool summer, I don't think it's up for debate that she's a cool season. So to put her in this bright coral dress that belongs on someone like a warm or bright spring is egregious. In fact, while her hair and makeup have some room for improvement, her dress, I think, is the worst part of her look because it really washes her out. But same shit happened to her. She like wore this beautiful dress. She she looked absolutely stunning. And there's so many posts online like, she looks so old. This is not the right color for her. This washes her out. This is not in her color season. This is not her color palette. She instead should have done this. She looks way better. And like the comments are like, yes, she looks way better in this alternate color. I was like, am I crazy for thinking like that is a fucked up thing to do? Am I crazy for thinking, why are we trying to tell others what looks best on them? Yes, color theory is a thing. But if she wanted to wear that coral dress and she felt very beautiful in it, what the fuck is it to you? And then I also saw comments that was like, well, if you're a celebrity, you're being subjected to that. And if you want to look like shit, then like, you can look like shit, that's fine, but we're allowed to talk about it. That is a very evil thing, don't you think? Don't you think that that is very evil? As a person who is on the internet and does this as a job, I'm very grateful that I don't let things get to me like I maybe once did. Kosas, Cloud Set, and Airy with a sponge. I'm sorry, but what a sinister way to talk about someone and post about them on the internet. I think what we're doing is pushing, especially onto young girls. Like we can sit here and be like, the media, the media is making young girls insecure. The media is making the youth insecure. The media is making men feel like they are not enough. But really we're contributing to that. What are we doing when we're sitting on tiktok.com? You're wearing the wrong fucking color. This bitch is wearing the wrong color for her. She looks a mess. I have personally done so many variations of this exact video, just me talking about this, but it still like bewilders me. Like I cannot understand it. This is Freckles by Pseudolab in shade one. Hold on, I'm really nervous about this. <sighs> okay. Oh fuck. We are basically making people feel insecure and feeling like they are wrong if they are wearing colors that are not in their season or not in their palette or if they're doing the wrong eyeliner for their eye shape. And we feel comfortable enough now to comment on it. Because as you know, people do not have any fear online. Like maybe they should. Maybe you should fear commenting on other people's looks on the internet. Maybe we should fear that a little bit more. And like I said, there's inherently nothing wrong with like wanting to know your color palette. If you don't find yourself feeling confident or comfortable in the colors that you're wearing or the way that you do your makeup and then you finally find something that makes you feel like you look the best, like, oh, this really flatters me. I feel very pretty in this. That's what matters. Glossier Halo Scope in the color Quartz. What is very evil though and very, very fucked up is when people are made to feel like they should be performing and basically behaving in a certain way or looking a certain way to look the most flattering for the public and not for themselves. And I feel like that is very much so the era that we are in. I love all my tattoos. I love all of them. They all have some sort of little story or something funny about them to me. I absolutely love them. I'm not gonna lie to you. When the whole clean girl aesthetic was going around, I was like, bah! Did I ruin my chances of being perceived as like a clean, classy girl ever in my life because I have tattoos? As if that's anything that I ever cared about. Because believe me, I don't, but suddenly I did because I was like, God damn it, everyone else cares about this, maybe I should as well. To Instagram, that's why it makes me so sad when these beautiful girls are getting onto TikTok and being like, what should I change? And they're being told how to change their hair color, their haircut, different ways to do their makeup. And they're basically just like changing themselves super quickly based off of what other people believe will look good on them instead of what they actually want. I've even seen it happen to guys. There's like 13 year old boys that will get on Reddit Dot com. I've been spending way too much time on Reddit recently. It's like actually very sinister and evil, but like these like 13 year old boys will be like, how do I look better? 
how do I make myself look better? And then there's grown men and teenage boys on there who will be like, yeah, bro, you gotta work out. Yeah, bro, you gotta get better fitness. Yeah, bro, you gotta start using acne medication. Like, fuck, we were not designed to get that level of feedback. Like, us as humans, our brains were not made for that. That's a 13-year-old boy. You're developing. You're like fucking growing into a, a guy, like a dude. Also, who is to say that you will suddenly feel your best when you do what other people perceive as the most um, conventionally attractive? I'll give you an example. A lot of people liked me when I was blonde, and a lot of people also liked me when I had copper hair. And I know this because people do not hesitate to tell me, Nicole, we like your blonde hair better than your brown hair. Nicole, we like your copper hair better than your brown hair. It's like, I really don't give a fuck. This is my hair. This comes out of my head. I don't think that your opinion matters. I kind of feel like I'm reverting back to my old Nicole, my old self. Similar in the way that Kylie Jenner is re-entering her King Kylie era. I'm just kidding. But I do feel like I am kind of reverting back to things that I used to like when I was younger and feeling okay with them. I've definitely experimented over the last few years, especially since moving to Philly. I've experimented with different styles and different things I liked. And like a lot of the things, I'm just kind of reverting back to things that I liked back when I was like, I don't know, 20, 21, and I'm feeling very myself. I don't regret at all experimenting with things. This is the Master Crystal Reflector in Quartz by Makeup by Mario. Hey girl, hey! Fuck! Yes. <laughs> yes. I like the direction I'm going in, and I think the more time that I were to spend on TikTok or maybe even on Pinterest observing what other people are doing and what is like kind of perceived as conventionally attractive and, and other people's opinions on what would look best on me or even asking for opinions, I think that's so dangerous. I used to be someone who used to ask for people's input all the time, which was just me asking for reassurance because oh, surprise, surprise guys. I do have OCD, but part of asking people for their opinion and their reassurance, and if I was making the right or wrong decision, I essentially like gave up individualism. There's also that like whole thing about like returning to who you were as a child, not that like 20 or 21 is a child, even though to like me, it is. Urban Decay, Urban Decay Moon Dust in a Space Cowboy, just more sparkles, oh my God. But like returning to yourself and the things that you liked as a child and like hobbies is like part of healing. And I feel the same way about me returning to things that I liked visually for myself when I was younger and things I liked originally without the influence of other people or without the influence of the internet. Just like what do I actually like? How do I actually feel the best in like my appearance? How do I actually feel the best in how I express myself? And I think I do a pretty good job at staying true to myself. I think now it's unfortunately just more important than ever because if you don't figure out what you like for yourself and what you should look like, then the internet's gonna figure that out for you, unfortunately. This is my first time trying this out. It's the Tower 28 Super Dew in just regular no shade. Oh, mmm, petroleum jelly. Cute. And I need to reiterate this again. There is nothing wrong with wanting to know, do I have upturned or downturned eyes? What is the best kind of eyeliner for my eye shape? Because if that makes you feel better, that's awesome. But if you are already confident in something that you are doing, do not feel the need to change it because someone else on the internet.com is telling you otherwise. Because as Jemima Kirk said, I think you guys may be thinking about yourselves too much. I also bought the REM Beauty Liquid Eyeshadow in Lab Coat. Fembot has been a long time favorite for me, so I'm excited about this. So as a person who is perceived as pretty confident and someone who tries not to think about what other people think of them, even though it's inevitable and I will eventually like, you know, fall into that trap. I do want to remind others that nobody is thinking about you as much as you are thinking about yourself. Even when I go to the gym, I think to myself, oh my God, everyone's staring at me. Everyone's staring at me, hip thrusting. Everyone is thinking dirty, naughty thoughts. Nobody's looking at me. I know this because I'm not looking at anyone else in the gym. I have never stood around and like stared at someone while at the gym. I've maybe like glanced and like looked and been like, oh, she's very pretty. Nothing more than that. I also try to remind myself, it's not my business what anyone else may think of me or their perception or what they are saying about me or what they're thinking about me. And that's why I am so anti against posting on Reddit, TikTok, anywhere, asking for people's opinions. All it does is open the door for mean people to be mean, criticism that is not necessarily healthy for our brains, and just depression, just true, real depression. And why would you allow that to enter your life when you don't have to? This is a Scandinavia makeup finishing spray, the bridal version, because I'm getting married today to myself. Look at the glitter. Do the color analysis if you so wish. I'm also here to remind you, even the prettiest fucking girls have like the worst insecurities. <laughs> I'm 
talk about me. No, I'm kidding. Take, for example, the alleged thing that happened with, I believe her name is Julia Ernst. Julia Ernst, Julia Ernst, Julia Ernst. Yeah, Julia Ernst. This is the Freck Lip Liner in shade three. This is all alleged. I don't even know if this is completely real or not. Like no one knows, but Julia Ernst is this beautiful girl. She's on TikTok, Instagram. She was like dating Vinny Hacker. She was accused of basically photoshopping her own pictures, getting caught in doing that, photoshopping her sister's pictures, dating Vinny Hacker, and I guess like going into a snark Reddit page about herself. See, the problem is Reddit. Going on to Reddit and then like writing snark about herself but from like a burner account, but then she got caught doing it. She was basically talking poorly about herself and like Finny Hacker and her sister and blah, 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 blah. Hopefully it's alleged, hopefully it's not true because obviously that's terrible, but it just goes to show that even the most beautiful fucking girl, Julia Ernst is absolutely a gorgeous girl. Without editing, just her natural self, her real body, her real face, exactly what she looks like, beautiful girl. And she has countless times been accused of editing her photos. And that's just so heartbreaking and sad because it's like, fuck, you are the last person that needs to be editing your photos. Nobody needs to be editing your photos, but like you, you can count on me that I'm never gonna be fucking editing my photos. I don't post a lot of pictures of my body to begin with. Sometimes I'll post a picture after the gym because I'm like, oh my God, look at me. I'm so swollen, strong, ooh. But you will never catch me editing. I do edit my thumbnails in the sense that I put the whole like, this is what every influencer does nowadays. I can promise you this. They do the Ramini app, which like makes your photos clearer. It was like created so that you could put old photos in there and then you could edit it so that it would be like super clear and like would take the blur out and everything. And I think it uses AI to a certain extent. Anyway, everyone and their mom uses that for their thumbnails now. I do as well. Like especially like podcast thumbnails or like the Chronically Online Girl series. Like my camera, there's the wall. The camera is usually like all the way back here. My camera quality is not that great. It's gonna be blurry. So I use that to basically make it sharper and clearer, but I will turn off all the settings that it adds like makeup onto your face or where it slims you down and makes your lips bigger. I turn that shit off, but I can promise you that I do not edit my photos and I never fucking will. And if I do call me out on that shit, this is a Glossier lip color in the shade Pony, which I think used to be Pisces. And that was like their collab with Olivia Rodrigo. I really want to see Olivia Rodrigo live. Oh, I love this color. I'll put a lip oil over it. This is the new milk lip oils in the shade chocolate cake. Oh shit, that does smell like chocolate cake. Anyway, point is you really never know who is editing their photos. You never know who is like truly extremely insecure about themselves, even though they may seem like an extremely confident person. I think I just become a master at avoidance. <laughs> Not actually, but like avoiding things that make me feel like shit about myself. If I know that following someone makes me feel bad about myself, and it's just because like I compare myself to them, I will unfollow or I'll mute them or whatever it takes. It doesn't necessarily mean that like they've done something wrong and that they're a bad person for it. It's just that sometimes our brains are very evil and conspiring against us and will make us be like, you don't look like her, you should die. And a quick way to avoid that is to remove yourself from that situation. So like, I am a big supporter of like, curating and editing your social media to work for you is going on Pinterest and looking at pictures of pretty girls like the best thing for my mental health all times of the month. Not really. Sometimes I can tolerate it pretty well. Is watching other girls thirst traps on TikTok always the best thing for me? No. Sometimes I get sad. And if I can't consume that, let's not talk shit about those girls. Let's just um, do what's right for our brains and maybe um, remove ourselves. This is the YSL Lash Clash Waterproof Mascara. I can't fucking believe YSL would send something to me. Crazy. Well, all I think about with YSL is Wyatt and Fletcher Shears. Speaking of which, I just went to a Cowgirl Clue concert the other week. Marina, Fletcher's girlfriend was there, oh, which I did end up going up to her. And I told her, I said, hi, you're the most beautiful person in the entire world, cause she is. And I just wanted to tell you that I have cried to your music so many times on the highway and I don't know why because I should be shaking ass to your music on the highway but I have fully sobbed and I love your work can't wait for your set and she was so sweet and so kind and oh <laughs> Her to me is like aspirational of how confident she seems to be in herself. And if I can appear that I'm faking that type of confidence, I love that. I don't think I'm necessarily faking that I have confidence. I think I definitely do have confidence. I just think I have gotten to a point in my life where I hate the thought of me hindering myself and my life experiences and how happy I can be based off of how confident or not I feel that day. So I think if I just pretend that I'm always at like max level of confidence, even when I'm not, I'm more likely to have a good time and be happy. That's the look. Wow, Nicole, so much different than anything you've ever done. If there's anything that you've learned from this video, um, don't go on Reddit. 
Reddit is banned. I'm gonna go on Reddit right after this. No more self-deprecating talk. No more asking for strangers of their opinions. No more of asking people in your personal life of their opinions if you already feel strongly in what you are currently doing. No more looks maxing. Break the obsession with the right and the wrong. Stop trying to like fit into an aesthetic so much that you like lose sight of yourself. I also have a video all about that, about aesthetics and our obsessions with it and everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked this little video. If you did, please make sure that you leave it a like because also so much. Also comment anything that you want to comment, any advice that you have for others, because I'm sure there will be a plethora of people reading the comments. And like, we have like such a cool community in the comments and I love it. Make sure you subscribe if you want to be nasty if not you're disgusting. Also make sure you have your bell notifications on so you know every single time I post, or else you are gross. I have other social media, Instagram, Twitter, Deepop, Spotify, it's just at Nicole Raffi. And if you want to follow me on TikTok while you still can, it's at Nikki Nasty. Bye. Bye.